And now, ladies and gentlemen, the, from New York, from the Guggenheim Museum, the assistant curator, Eta orain bai, gaurko arratzaldeko irugarren eta azken itzaldia, hau bai, aldaketarik izan ez duena, David Van de Leer. Please welcome. Hello, everybody. Um, it must have been a long, uh, long day, so I hope you bear with me a, a, little, bit, uh, a little bit longer. I'm going to present you, um, at the end of my presentation, three projects that I'm currently working on. But as they're all in development at the moment, I'm going to talk you through the process that's yeah, uh, coming before all of, uh, all of these projects. And in order to do so, I would like to start with an, uh, a series of introductions, basically. Uh, the first one being um, a reference to Andrea Fraser, uh, an artist in the US. Um, and she did a beautiful piece, Official Welcome. But before we do so, we look briefly at the Guggenheim, because I yeah, can barely um, be here in Bilbao uh, without making a reference to, uh, to our building. Um, this is Andrea Fraser in a piece of 2001, uh, which was called uh, Little Frank and his, um, well, there is a, a longer title uh, referring to the building. What she's doing in this, uh, in this piece, she picks up the, the audio guide, and I'm not sure if the local people here have ever tried the audio guide for, uh, for our building. Um, it's quite um, a festive audio guide, so to say, um, convincing you to really uh, enjoy the building, um, um, enjoy the voluptuous uh, spaces, and so on. Uh, she really does this, and she starts hugging the, the columns and, um, and, so, and so forth. Uh, the reason why I show this is because much of my presentation today will be about uh, what it means to, uh, to work for a bigger institution like the Guggenheim um, and how, how you make projects in there. Uh, much of Andrea Fraser's work is also about what institutions are, uh, so that's why uh, she's up here right now. The second piece that I wanted to show you um, is her official welcome piece. Also, this piece is from 2001, um, and this was commissioned by the MICA Foundation. And what she's doing here, uh, she's making a parody on all of these welcome, uh, welcome notes that you always get when you give, um, give a talk or a presentation. Um, and she's, she's giving you a whole uh, slew of these, uh, the, these notes. Um, but while she's uh, delivering those, she's slowly getting undressed um, until she's standing there in her uh, Gucci thong, uh, her bra, and in her high heels, um, and exclaims that um, she is not a person that day, but she's um, um, an object in an, art, uh, in an artwork. The reason why uh, I wanted to show you this is because it gave me the, um, the framework for this, uh, this presentation today. What we're going to do is also a series of introductions, and don't worry, I'm not going to get undressed uh, because I look really bad in a thong, um, but nevertheless. Um, so briefly about uh, the Guggenheim and architecture. Um, you probably all know our building in New York. Uh, 1959 it opens, um, still a very important building and a, yeah, a lovely space to, uh, to work in and work with. Um, but we're known for our other buildings too, of course, the Guggenheim bu uh, building here in the city, uh, Bilbao, as well as our buildings in Venice and in, um, in Berlin. I didn't include photos for those, um, but I definitely encourage you to go to those too. Um, but that's not all for our buildings, because we also do feasibility studies. Um, we do those relatively often. Um, at the top left, you see a building by Zaha Hadid, uh, or a proposed building for Vilnius. Uh, and on the right, you see a building for, uh, for uh, Rio de Janeiro by Jean Nouvel. The lower part is a building um, that is happening, and it's the new Guggenheim building in Abu Dhabi, also by Frank Gehry. Um, the architect design, that designs our building here in the city, but you probably all know this. Um, so that's, that's a reference to our buildings, and it's important to frame all of this, I, uh, I feel, um, followed by what we usually did for our, our architecture exhibitions. Uh, this is the big Frank Gehry show that we did, um, well, it's nine, uh, nine, ten years ago now, um, with the Bilbao model here up front, um, and a large installation hanging behind it. Um, the, the, um, the exhibition took up the whole building in New York, as well as did this exhibition, which is an exhibition uh, of the work of Zaha Hadid, um, also here in two slides. The show that's, um, that I was hired to work on 
was uh, a show that celebrated our t uh, 50th anniversary in 2009, uh, which was of course referring to the Frank Lloyd Wright building, um, which was a very quiet show. We tried to keep it as quiet as possible, even though it was a big celebratory, um, celebratory moment. Um, you see how quiet the ramps are, and it was uh, quite a challenge to keep it as quiet as possible. Um, it doesn't mean that by showing you these, um, this is really what we're going to do, and that's why I showed them early on in the presentation. Um, having been out at Guggenheim uh, for two years, you're figuring out what's, uh, what kind of program you want to make and how this is taking shape, um, which in a way is all about uh, what curating um, uh, really means for, uh, for a specific curator. Um, to give you the definition of curating for the people that uh, don't know what we're talking about, um, probably the best description is um, a person that oversees something or that, uh, that really cares for something. And in most cases, that means caring for a collection. Um, and what most of my colleagues and in other institutions do uh, is they look at stuff all day. <laughs> um, this is a slide um, with a few quotes that I prepared for a presentation uh, last year in, uh, in Paris for the ICOM Foundation. Um, ICOM is an organization that's, um, um, that is being visited by curators that do architecture exhibitions, but also uh, museums that collect architecture. Um, I was in a very strange uh, spot there because we don't collect architecture and we're not going to collect architecture, so that's also why this whole process is really about finding um, a little bit of a language to, uh, to work with. Um, I was at that presentation there and I had done the research uh, for them about how architects keep their archives. Um, and it turned out that everybody was talking about stuff. Um, and that's also what, uh, what most of these curators work with, of course. Uh, the first quote, I hope you all uh, can, uh, can guess who this Richard is. Um, it's Richard Meyer. And this is his uh, model museum. That is where most of uh, the, the curators uh, would go to to, uh, to pick up their stuff for their collections. You, visited the, uh, you visited, uh, visit the offices of the architects, um, pick out uh, the latest models that you really like and see if they fit into your collection. Sometimes this is incredibly well organized. This is at uh, Richard Meyer's office here uh, or his Long Island um, um, uh, branch. Um, sometimes it's a little less organized, uh, and this is how some of you may, uh, may work in the future. Um, I would suggest that you do the first thing, though. Um, the third option, um, this, uh, I like this one, I must say. This is called um, the, the model graveyard. This is Snohetta's office in New York. Um, and whatever they, whenever they have a model that they don't really like, they throw it over the back of this, uh, this glass box. There's an opening in the back. Um, and the model ends up, uh, ends up in the graveyard. So this is the context that, um, that some or many of my, uh, my fellow curators work in. Um, and as we are not keeping a collection, I was not, uh, not charged to do so, thankfully, uh, although I love visiting architects' offices. Um, it was about finding a new sense of urgency. And I would like to refer back briefly to uh, a sketch that my former boss, Stephen Hall, had hanging uh, above his desk. And he kept on pointing uh, me at this sketch basically day in, day out, because usually w whenever I was coming with, uh, with a request, um, in his mind it was ending up in the red corner, which was unimportant and urgent, and that would always get a very annoyed um, um, uh, response. Um, it was good 